السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحانك ربنا لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم uh, Today إن شاء الله we will be uh, going on we uh, uh, last time we saw in ayah 7 how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said indeed we have made that which is on the earth a dominant for it that we may test them so there will be a test everyone in this dunya will be tested and the highest of those who are tested are, are the prophets. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test us all to see who is the one who can who, who will succeed in their in uh, in their tests. Who? Who is the one succeeding in the test? Who are the winners? Who are the uh, who are those who will get the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get the reward at the end and who are the ones who will get the punishment indeed in the end we will turn all that is into uh, all that is in this earth into a bare plain so there will be nothing on it all that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in this universe is going to vanish. We saw earlier when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ فطرت. So when the heavens break apart. Another verse, إِذَا السَّمَاءُ شَقَّتْ When the sky is split asunder. وَإِذَا الْكَوَاكِبُ انْتَثَرَتْ And when the stars' plants are scattered. إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ When the sun is folded as a ball. وَإِذَا النُّجُومُ كَدَرَتْ When the light of the stars go away. وَإِذَا الْبِحَارُ سُجِّرَتْ When the seas become a blazing fire. Everything is going to vanish from this earth, from this universe. وَإِنَّا لَجَاعِلُونَ مَا عَلَيْهَا صَعِيدًا جُرُزًا There will be nothing. أَمْ حَسِبْتَ أَنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْكَهْفِ وَالرَّقِّيمِ كَانُوا مِنْ آيَاتِنَا عَجَبًا So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to tell us the story of the people, the companions of the cave, the sleepers of the cave. So we, we mentioned last time that Quraysh wanted to know this story uh, as the uh, Jews uh, sa um, scholars told them to ask Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is saying here, oh, do you think that the companions of the cave or the sleepers of the cave and the inscription or the bearers of the inscription were among our signs a wonder? So as we mentioned, Last session, we have several stories in Surah Al-Kahf. So this is the first story that talks about the test of religion. We said that everyone is going to be tested. So there will be lots of testing in, in this dunya. So one of the tests might be the uh, test of religion, which is the story of the people of the cave. Another another test might be the fitna of money, the test of money, the test of having wealth. Another fitna is the fitna, the, the, the test of the knowledge. If, uh, if someone, uh, if that knowledge leads and um, does not lead to humility, the fitna of power. So there are so many fitnas and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a story about each of these fitness, and he starts here by the story of Ashab al -Kahf. So Allah tells, tells us stories in the, in the Quran, and 
we all love to hear stories. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the stories of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are ahsan al-qasas, the best of all stories. They are truthful. So in these stories, there are wisdoms and lessons. So do not pass by these stories when you read them without knowing what is the wisdom behind each and every story. Benefit from all the stories. Do not say that these are the stories of old nations. They are just stories. No, there is a wisdom. There is a lesson with each and every story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran. So here we have the story of the young men. So some young men were seeking refuge in a cave. We don't know their names. It's irrelevant. We don't know the name of the cave. It's irrelevant. We don't know uh, so many things, so many um, things that each story would tell is not mentioned here. Allah wants, to, wants us to know the story exactly, just the main things in the story. So those young men believed in Allah. They did not want to worship false gods. Same as what their people, what uh, everyone in their uh, uh, village used to do. And there was a king who was a pagan, a non-believer, who wanted to persecute them. So they flee, they run away from him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Oh, Muhammad, if Quraysh is asking about the story of the sleepers of the cave, thinking that it is a, a wonder, then tell them it's not a big wonder. It's one of our miracles that are countless. There are so many miracles that are much greater than this miracle. إذ أول فتية إلى الكهف فقالوا ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة وهيئ لنا من أمرنا رشدا. So when the young men, when the youth retreated to the cave and said, Our Lord, grant us a special mercy from yourself and prepare for us bright guidance and make our affairs proper. So as soon as they entered the cave, they made a dua. So the word awa uh, in Arabic means to seek a shelter to hide in. So, and the fitya are the uh, uh, young men at the beginning of, uh, of their uh, of age. Yani it's about uh, late teenager till in uh, the beginning of their 20s. So these are the fitya. So these fitya, these young men, run away, flee from a problem that they were facing. So they left their people. They left their families. They left their houses. They left their sustenance. They left everything behind and flee, flee and run away. Where? إلى الكهف To the cave, a place where there is nothing in. So they left everything to nothing. And they said, ربنا آتنا من لدنك رحمة so they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mercy. They asked only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for mercy because they realized that the, they, they knew there is no mercy from people. So they said, oh Lord, give us mercy directly from you. Guide us to the true and straight path to the path of, uh, of haq, to the, 
to the path that you choose for us, that is the, the right path. Make our affairs firm and straight. So they were fleeing because they faced a problem. And the first thing they did when they entered the cave was to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rahmatuka ya Rabb. So this is what we say when we have a problem. Mercy. Mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers the, the call even to those who are not, not Muslims. Once, uh, this is a story that was told to us. Uh, there was a woman who was not a believer and she was even atheist. She wouldn't believe in God. And she was in a park and... Uh, when they were in the park, she had her two years old uh, baby with her. And uh, she, she was talking with others and the, the, this child just walked, uh, walked and walked and wandered until he was uh, literally on the street. When his mom just looked and saw him, she said out of, out of a sudden, oh my God. So he was, there was a fast car coming and it was about to hit him. But Allah answered the call of the one who was in, in so much need for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She said, Oh my God. And Allah immediately answered the call. The car stopped just inches from that child. When a, when a sick person goes to the doctor, he knows that he has uh, uh, something, uh, any, what to say, a very bad illness a serious uh, sickness and he goes to the to the doctor but even when he goes to the doctor he makes dua and with this he would ask all the the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he Allah would heal him he knows that the, the doctor himself is just a means, but if Allah does not uh, order the medicine to heal him, then the medicine will not be effective. And he knows that nothing can help him except Allah, but the doctor is a mean that through that doctor, he would get shifa. But Deep in heart, he knows that only Allah is the one who is going to heal him. And that's why he would make dua and sincere dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So dua is the weapon of the believer. It shows complete dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so many people, if they want something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they would wake up at night before Fajr because they know that this is the time that Allah is closest to, to his servants. They know that Allah said, astajib lakum. Ask me and I will answer your prayers. And they will make dua and they would talk to Allah and they would they would make sujood and they will along their sujood and they will talk to Allah and they will tell him what they want and they will cry. Because they know only Allah is able to save them. Only Allah is going to help them. So those young men, when they get into the cave, they the first thing they did, they 
made du'a. Rabbana atina min ladunka rahma. O Lord, grant us a special mercy. Wahayyi lana min amrina rashada. And give us guidance. Make our affairs proper. So what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? فَضَرَبْنَا عَلَىٰ آذَانِهِمْ فِي الْكَهْفِ سِنِينَ عَدَدًا So we cast a cover of sleep over their ears within the cave for a number of years. Now we want to look at the words. A cast, uh, uh, Allah casted a cover of sleep over their ears. What does this mean? So they fell into a deep sleep that no matter how loud the sounds are there, they would not walk up. They would not walk up. The word barabna means to hit something with something else in a stronger uh, way. So the one who is hitting should be smart enough that he does not hit with his hand something that is stronger than him because he would be hitting himself when someone is when someone is angry he would hit the uh, table or the wall but he will feel the pain now barabna this word means that allah put a cover it's not the physical cover. It's not the physical hitting. It's the cover that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put on their ears. Let's take an example now. When a farmer works hard digging in the land, then he feels tired. So what does he do to rest? He stops for a minute. So he stops even the tools are still in his hands. If he gets tired of standing, then he sits down. But if he gets tired of sitting, he gets a nap. When he falls asleep, he will not feel anything. But if there is a, a he, will, he will not see anything. But if there is a sound, next to him if something hits next to him then he will he will wake up so this is what happened to the sick person who is in pain so when he falls asleep then he stops uttering the pain words and everyone around him would say stop all the noise just whisper don't let him sleep let him rest but as soon as he wakes up he will start feeling the pain once again So it's the sound that will make him wake up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted those young men to fully rest. So he made them sleep, deep sleep. When a person sleeps, he will not be able to see anything around him. His eyes will not, will not work anymore. So he's not seeing anything. But if there is a loud sound near him, he will hear it and he will wake up. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, he, Allah, covered up their ears. He stopped their ears from hearing anything around them. So to have full rest. So they slept for years and years and years. ثُمَّ بَعَثْنَاهُمْ لِنَعْلَمَ أَيُّ الْحِزْبَيْنِ أَحْصَى لِمَا لَبِثُوا أَمَدًا Then we awaken them. That we, we might show which of the two factions, which of the two groups was most precise in calculating what extent they had remained in time. So the word بَعَثْنَاهُمْ is to the re resurrect them. And it is said to, so, to, uh, to those who die. So Allah resurrects the death. So as if that their long, long sleep was like death. We know that sleeping is like uh, dying, except that the one who sleeps wakes up again. 
uh, wakes up again in this dunya, in this life. While the one who dies will not wake up again until the day of judgment. When we go to sleep, our ruh, our soul, leaves our body. But it is still connected. However, when we die, our ruh leaves our body and the connection is cut off. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains this in Surah Al-Zumar 42 when he says, Allahu yatawaffa al-anfusa hina mawtiha wallati lam tamut fi manamiha fayumsiku allati qada alayha al-mawta wa yursilu al-ukhra ila ajalin musamma. Allah takes the souls at the time of their death. And when people, are, uh, when people are asleep. So he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, withholds the souls for whom he decreed death. Their soul will not come back. And restores and releases the other souls for a specified time. It's not death time for them. So they will wake again. And we hear so many stories that so-and-so went to bed but never got up again. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought those young men back to see who has the most accurate information about them and of how many years they slept. So Allah says, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ نَبَأَهُمْ بِالْحَقِّ إِنَّهُمْ فِتْيَةٌ آمَنُوا بِرَبِّهِمْ وَزِدْنَاهُمْ هُدَى So we are the one who will relate to you, O Muhammad, their true real story. Indeed, they were young men who believed in their, in their Lord and we increased them in guidance. So this is a summary of the whole story. So Allah summarized the story in a few verses, but now he, in, in this um, verse and on, he is going to tell us their, the story, their story in detail. So, Allah says in Surah Muhammad, Ayah 17, And those who are guided, he increased them in the guidance and gave them their righteousness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would enlighten the inner sight of those who are guided, of those who follow the right path, of those who obey the orders, of those who get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah will give them, give them something extra. So let's take, for example, an example of a teacher. When he, uh, when he notices that he has a very smart uh, student in his class, that he exceeds all his, uh, all his classmates, then he gives him more attention. And he explains more for him. He gives him extra work and consequently extra credit. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sees someone who is coming to him walking, he comes to him running and he gets him closer to him. So these young men broke away from their culture. They broke away from their society. They broke away from their king and from everyone who was worshipping the idols. They stood up against the culture. They stood up against everything, against everyone. They were open-minded. They wanted to make a change. They wanted to say the truth. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, سَبْعَةٌ يُظِلُّهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ظِلِّهِ يَوْمَ لَا ظِلَّ إِلَّا ظِلُّهُ شَابٌ نَشَأَ فِي عِبَادَةِ اللَّهِ Seven of the people will be sheltered under the shade of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when there is no shade other than his shield. 
a young man, a young person who is raising himself up in the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A young man, a young woman who are uh, doing their best to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Young people who are living righteously. Ya Allah, we ask you to protect our children. Ya Allah, we ask you to protect our kids. We ask you to, to raise them under your care. Ya Allah, we ask you to enlighten their hearts. Ya Allah, we ask you to enlighten their path. Ya Allah, we ask you to enlighten their inner sight. We ask you, Ya Allah, to provide them with good companions, good friends who will correct them if they do any mistakes. We want good friends for our kids, Ya Allah. So these are young men together. They were together. They were friends. They were companions. They helped each other for the sake of Allah. They helped each other to be, uh, to stand up against the culture. Sayyidina Musa asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, 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 to send with him his brother so that they both would go to Fir'aun. So Allah said, We will strengthen you with your brother. So being together, having good companions is very important in this, in this dunya. We want to search for the good companions for our children. We want to know who are the friends of our children. Their, the, 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 their friends at school are called classmates. They are not friends. The friends are the ones who will advise them if they get wrong. They will help them to, uh, on the right path. They will show them the right path. They will correct them if they go astray. This is the type of friends that we need for our kids. A good friend, a true friend is very important in this dunya. One of the good people said, and tell me who your friend is and I will tell you who you are. This is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says. So a person would be the same on the same path as his friend. So know how to find your companion. Search for a good companion who will get you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be a friend with those who will, if you look at them, they will, get, they will make you say, they will force you to say, Ya Allah, they will remind you of Allah. عاشر من ينهضك إلى الله حاله ويدلك على الله مقاله. Be a friend, take a friend, that person who would, if you see, you will remember Allah, and who, if he talks, he will remind you of Allah. Don't just take a friend just to make you happy, to make you feel good, to make you, no. Everything is vanishing in this dunya. But the true friend is the one who will, who will want, who has the aim that he will be in paradise with you. And in the day after, there will be uh, a shafa'a intercession for those who, are, uh, who used to be good friends in dunya. Someone would say, Ya Allah, I haven't seen my friend. Uh, we, were, we were together in dunya. We were making uh, dhikr together. We were, we were in dunya. 
I, I haven't seen him. He would say he is in hell fire. He says, uh, I cannot leave him there. He say, go to him. Take his hand and go. Take him. And he will be with you in Jannah. True friends for the sake of Allah. Sincere relationship for the sake of Allah. Nothing else. So, there are, these are young men who believed in their Lord and they were faithful. They were true believers. So Allah increased their guidance. Every single step we take to Allah, Allah will make the next step easier. If you decide, if you, if you decide to memorize the Quran, it will be, it might be difficult at the beginning. But be patient. Allah will make it easier and easier. If you start, if you start to memorize one line every day, then later you will see, you will find yourself memorizing two or three lines. Why? This is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank him. He made things easier for you. Then you will, you will feel that you will not be able to live without Quran, without the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to memorize it, you want to understand it, you want, you want to know everything about the Quran. You want it to be your, your, uh, your guidance in this dunya. So, man atani yamshi atayituhu harwala. This is what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in the hadith of Qusi. Whoever comes walking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah will come to him running. So remember, with every good deed you do, your iman goes up. So the more iman you have, the extra more iman you will get the closer you will get to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can we get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We have to have a few minutes every day to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just sit alone, talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make wudu, to, to, pray two rakahs and talk to Allah. Get closer to Allah. Read his book. Know about the life of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Know his seerah. Know about his companions. This is how we get closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So what happens to those, to those young men? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَرَبَطْنَا عَلَىٰ قُلُوبِهِمْ إذ قاموا فقالوا ربنا رب السماوات والأرض لن ندعو من دونه إلها آخر لقد قلنا إذا شططا. So we we made Allah سبحانه وتعالى is saying we strengthened and we made firm their hearts. And this is very important. So they, they said, لن ندعو من دونه إلها لقد قلنا إذا تشطط. Well, Allah strengthened their, and made firm their hearts. And when they stood up and said, our Lord is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. We will never invoke any other deity than him. But should we do so? We would, we would have certainly spoken then an excessive transgression. So Allah showed that their hearts was terrified. They were terrified. They were scared. They were scared of their community's threat that they're going to, to be killed. 
king wanted to kill them. So Allah comforted them. وَرَبَطْنَا عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ وَرَبَطْنَا عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ And this, this word, رَبَطْنَا, we strengthened their heart. This is what happened to uh, the mother of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. When Allah, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to her, uh, فَإِنْ خِفْتِ عَلَيْهِ فَأَلْقِيهِ فِي الْيَمْتِ So, uh, the, uh, if you are scared, then about your son, that then you throw him in the in the river. So why? If that did not happen, so when, when she was scared that Pharaoh is going to kill her her son. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala inspired to her that suckle him, but when you fear for him. Cast him into the river and do not fear and do not grieve. Indeed, we will return him to you and we will make him of the messengers. So what happens? Her heart, her heart became, became empty. She, she was so, so worried about her son. She was about to disclose the matters, to, to, to say it to them. And Allah made her heart fast, firm, that she would be of the believers. So Allah strengthened their hearts. So when... When they stood up to flee, they, they initiated the work of fleeing. So they started the work and then Allah helped him. If you want something from Allah, do not say, okay, I believe in Allah and he will give it to me. No, you have to do something. They fled away and then they asked Allah, they did not stay still. They did not just wait and, and ask Allah to save them. No. Allah helped them and saved their hearts after they fled away, after they made dua. So they initiated the work and Allah helped after. So these, our people, have taken besides him deities. They worshipped other gods than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did our people not prove their statements with their true authority. They did not prove what they are saying. They did not prove why they are worshipping other than Allah. Who does more wrong than the one who fabricates lies about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِمَّنْ افْتَرَى عَلَى اللَّهِ كَذِبًا so when you speak about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to be careful of what you are saying. Do not say, I think Allah means this and that. There is no I think. If you are not sure, do not say it. If you are asked a question and you don't know the answer, say, I don't know the answer. Don't be ashamed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has assigned angels to write everything for you. There will be records for you waiting in the day of judgment. And everything, everything will be recorded in their records. So be careful of what you are saying. Do not say a word that is a lie.
فمن أظلم ممن افترى على الله كذبا وإذ اعتزلتموهم وما يعبدون إلا الله فأوه إلى الكهف ينشر لكم ربكم من رحمته ويهيئ لكم من أمركم مرفقة So when you broke away from your people go to the cave Allah will show you protection Allah will show you mercy فأوه إلى الكهف ينشر لكم ربكم من رحمته ويهيئ لكم من أمرهم من أمركم مرفقة وترى الشمس إذا إذا طلعت تزاور عن كهفهم ذات اليمين وإذا غربت تقرضهم ذات الشمال وهم في فجوة منه ذلك من آيات الله من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا And you would see when the sun rises, so it will incline away from the cave on the right. And when it sets, it will pass away from them to, 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 on the left while they are lying. They are lying in, in that cave. So this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. So the sun is not going to affect them. So while they are in that spacious place, lying inside the cave. So this was one of the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if they... If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to guide someone, then he will be guided. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to get someone to let to go astray, then you will never find any guardian to direct him. You will, you will never find anyone to, to guide him. So it's all by Allah's will. So Allah guides whoever he wants to guide. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for to, to put us on the right on the right path. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us to give our children the the the, the wisdom to choose what is right and to be away from what is wrong. وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين We'll go on in شاء الله next session